They did two things. They had a, com uh, a computer a consumer study, and they also had a sales survey. And what was interesting is that one of their findings was that um, libraries remain the major access channels for audiobooks, be in um, either electronic or, or physical, and they're Im important drivers of audiobook discovery. 52% of the people, which is a huge amount, said bor borrowing from a library or a library website was important or very important for discovering new audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And 43% of listeners said that they downloaded an audiobook from a library. And 14% said that they most often use the library for their digital listening. So it's clear the industry saw a 22.7% mm -hmm. increase. It is um, a thriving industry. People, you know, one of the things that people said they like to do is they like to listen to audiobooks because they could do other things <laughs> while they were, you know, while they were, while they were listening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and um, drive right, you can listen drive. wherever you are, and that audiobooks are, are very um, portable. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to point out that it's important, the library is, is really providing an important service by providing both the access to the electronic mm -hmm. audiobooks as well as to the physical formats. And it's interesting because we're pretty much looking at that those statistics our patrons are still very interested in the um, physical CD itself. They're very interested in the audio and the downloadables, but they also still want mm -hmm. to come in and check out the, that physical C CD. Um, but according to this, in terms of sales, the digital sales are way surpassing the um, CD sales. You mean, you mean usage, not sales? No, in sales. Oh, well, this is oh, from the Audio oh, right. Book okay. Publishers okay. Association. So it's not saying who they're selling it to. I mean, right. partly it's libraries, partly it's, uh, you know, consumers. But it's interesting how it's 87.5% as digital versus 11.3% um, as the physical uh. CD. So I thought that was interesting. And it's almost completely adult titles that are really selling. 89.8% mm -hmm. um, for adults and only 10.2% for children. Interesting. So I, I just thought it was an interesting way to look at mm -hmm. our collections. And it also they also said that you may be an audiobook listener, but you are also just as likely to check out a book as well. Mm -hmm. So you're listening mm -hmm. and you're reading, and we're just... Um, that they that they really um, oh these are the things that they three activities they like to do driving while you're listening mm -hmm. relaxing before you go to sleep which is my problem I fall Should asleep <laughs> and doing housework or chores yeah. so um, it, it's certainly a a format that's going to stay it just depends yeah. on how it's going to be it physical or digital it, it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that was interesting. And that's it. Good question. Yeah. Is that information, how to do the download, the streaming, is that on the internet, on our website? Because yes. it's real easy to read. That's easy. It, you know, that particular, nice. it, it, like, that's yeah, real this is easy. Pretty easy. That is easy, but, I mean, it's not the, you know, it's not the full, if you run into any kind of issues, there's much more help. That's on the website, okay. both, both our instructions and instructions yeah. by the vendors. Yeah. Okay. But this is to get people started, and in most cases, we find that it's enough. Oh, okay. It's added. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The director search. Um, I don't think I need to tell anyone here too much about the director search because we've all worked through all of this together. Uh, but to summarize, uh, we had a search firm. We uh, uh, closed the search on July 15th. Shortly thereafter, we reviewed resumes. We invited um, a fair number. Eight, I believe, for um, mm -hmm. Skype interviews. We've completed the Skype interviews, and we have um, uh, uh, set dates and a program for the final round of interviews um, next week. 
which, um, you know, we, we hope, and as I say, final round, it's the final round of this set of candidates, and we hope that results in issuing, you know, making an offer to a director. Um, but we are committed to getting the very best candidate, and we are very fortunate that we have very able co-directors who are right now doing way more than holding down the fort. I mean, the library is continuing, as you've just heard, doing all the things that uh, the library needs to be doing. So. We're certainly hoping that one of the candidates is somebody that we feel can continue to lead this library, and we shall see. Um, but as I'm looking at you all here, see you next week, guys. <laughs> so, um, Kathleen, one question, I, and I, I apologize. In a, sense, um, a, couple, like a couple weeks ago, I got an email through my trustee email address um, that only came to me versus every trustee. So I just want to make sure, I, I did receive two emails from the candidates that we interviewed. Did you all get the interview emails from them? I got Thank you. three. Okay, I got two. So okay, so hey, I'm two. the president. I think I got the. Okay, yeah, okay. I just, just, I just want to make sure you got them. That's all. Because because last time the email came to me and nobody else. So I just want to make sure that that was not Which the case. Candidate? Yeah. Well, we didn't. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to name names. That's not yeah. 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 Okay. But the question I've got is, because if I, how do I send it back so that the library and I'll work with technology so that my library address shows up and do I just add it to my Gmail account? Because if I hit reply, right, it right. would show your Gmail. It shows your whatever email right. address you have. Yes, it would. It would. But if you go into the remote access to your Wilmet right. library address, it will do that. We can help you with that. <laughs> I you need that. herself, and she just called me. So could you just take over while I just take this call? Okay. Gotcha. I think Jan needs to. Uh, okay. So, Trustee Barsh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Ready to do the Illinois? I guess so. Uh, there were not too many things, but a few few things uh, coming with the uh, ILA that they had. Um, one is that if you have a favorite librarian, there is an <laughs> I Love My Librarian Award. Nominations can be sent through October 1st to ilovelibraries.org, I love my librarian. We have so many librarians here who would be natural for that, yeah. yes, that it would be a tough thing to pick even one. But it's out there, and it might be nice to uh, all get together. And, and they can receive a $5,000 cash award, which is... That's even pretty impressive. Yes, that is pretty And get to go to New York. Yeah. yeah. And go to New York. <laughs> this is honored at a ceremony in New York. Wow. That sounds really neat. <laughs> okay. There's uh, okay. one I didn't uh, look further. I meant to go back and I forgot. <laughs> is that in this first uh, report is that Freeport Public Library has a program to provide free legal assistance. Now, I don't know what that means in terms of how much or what kind. I'll be glad to take a look, a further look at it. But that might be something in the future that we might want to think about adding to our library at that point. Um, a lot of times I know that in some of the legal aid or a group mm -hmm. of uh, lawyers, and it's generally through the Lawyers Association, if there are particular issues or whatever, we'll go to a library. Mm -hmm. And do it in the library. We'll do it as opposed to the library being the one for the, providing legal yeah. advice. That's probably a better way to go about, yeah. about it. You know, yeah. if it's like appeal and tax assessment, you right. might have right. the assessor mm -hmm. coming for whatever. And you yeah. all did a wonderful job with it. Okay, I'm <clears throat> I'm reading from the the first one from July 27th. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The uh, other items that were interesting is. Um, the Deerfield Library is being honored for its program that pushes readers out of their comfort comfort zone. And I tried to get a, a good handle on that one, and I'm not quite sure. They, there wasn't enough information. It wasn't like the list of books you know, that they were asking for. But I guess it's been very um, unusual and very well received. There are like hundreds of people signing up. But these are books. Uh, one woman talked about reading uh, Well, anyway, it was a book on immigration, and the 
family who had come here and had lots of problems, and it really opened her eyes to exactly what was going on. So they try to get people to, as I said, get out of their comfort zone and to choose books uh, to read during this year, year long. That's quite a long uh, mm -hmm. time to have a reading program. But it seems to be very well received and uh, getting people to think about things that they ordinarily wouldn't through reading books on subjects that they ordinarily wouldn't think about. So it sounded pretty interesting. And then the other one that was interesting is um, this one I had to talk about Nancy Wagner. She's the only one, or she's not the only one, but I couldn't find enough information on this one, and so I, I went to her and she did. There is a, um, there was a reference to uh, using pig statues, you know, like the cows in Chicago type thing. And I remembered hearing about that years ago and that it wasn't very much of a success, you know, in comparison to what they did in Chicago. Well, it turns out it was a library initiative and they had all different libraries. Um, I don't remember, you know, being part of it here. And it's, it was the ALS system that they were hyping and that was behind it. So anyway, I wanted to show you. What they were trying to do is to get people to know more about their libraries mm -hmm. and to, you know, come in and visit kind of thing. And for that, it was really successful. <laughs> <laughs> These were, were the three, right? <laughs> 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 the from the Simpsons. So it was a success. Days of swine and roast beef. Yeah. 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 Now I'm going to fail on why it was in this particular Thanks. copy of the ILA. <laughs> but kind of a fun idea. I don't know. Um, you know, you could carry that even further if you wanted to, just because it's thinking about something, you know, way in the future, about having a contest and doing some kind of, you know, decoration. Well, we had the decorated All benches. The yes. We had yes. the decorated mm -hmm. benches. I couldn't remember. <laughs> I know we used to have one in the, the lobby. <laughs> right. Um, but but Which I, we should put I back. can't remember because what local initiative that was. Right. The, bench? the decorated benches, it was a fundraiser, maybe. Oh, the person that wrote in the yeah, well, no, card. This, right. yeah. It was a while ago that they did the benches, but you could always just do something else. Okay, and then the uh, the next one is August 7th, and these are um, resolutions that the political things that were uh, decided one way or the other. Um, <clears throat> the Congressional Review Act, CRA, is a re resolution to restore strong and forcible net neutrality rules, and that one actually passed in a bipartisan way with people from both parties signing on, which is a very good thing, I think. And I thought there was one other, like, the, oh yeah, the governor signed two bills. One, um, the, to use the accrual method of putting the accounting together. The requirement that government must use the accrual method would have resulted in government's additional costs for libraries and all units of government. So the ILA worked on something which states if a library's audits have been performed on the basis of cash accounting in the past, that they can continue to do that. that would we have, we that have would always used a modified cash. Right. Uh -huh. So that, that made things easier. I think there was a little bit of consternation oh, involved about trying to change the whole system. And then the other was House Bill 5752, which created a broadband advisory council within the state of Illinois, Illinois to explore ways to expo expand broadband access throughout the state. And that was signed also by Governor Rauner in early August. So both of those things are helping the libraries move forward, I think. And uh, that's about it All right. for this month. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jan. Um, uh, information items, there's going to be legislative breakfast. Um, two trustees can attend. Uh, Lisa and I will both be attending. That's Friday, September 7th. Um, 
we are hosting. It's at our auditorium, and it's a good opportunity for all Wilmette County State and Federal Representatives are invited, and not all Wilmette County State and Federal Representatives <laughs> attend. <laughs> um, but um, it's it's usually you know a good collection of folks. Um, let's see. Uh, ILA Annual Conference is in Peoria. Mm -hmm. uh, cooperative Projects and Community Services Reports, Attachment 8. Lisa, is this one a part of what you were looking at? Well, that's for? what uh, Gail had alluded to earlier when she talked about the fire. Uh, and yes. that's mainly from youth services and adult services. Right. In um, terms of, she had mentioned those programs. And, and we'll have more as we go forward. And um, as communications are located behind attachment nine, um, any comment, et cetera, with respect to those? If not, any new business? Just old quick business? question. Given that the um, landscape is put on hold, but sort of moving forward,